Good morning YouTube, uh, this is Rob Pollard with a short video on XP 11s new native VR capabilities. Here I am at my house um, and uh, the airport is over there and uh, this is something you couldn't do before in XP. Anyway, we're going to head over to the airport and I'll take you around XP 11. We're using bulk standard XP 11 uh, with no real mods other than uh, Ortho for XP. Now Ortho for XP enables you to freely add uh, satellite uh, data and uh, open uh, roadmaps and railways to your scenery it just makes it look absolutely stunning worth doing now to use vr you need to go into steam go into properties and once you're in there you need to select the open beta that's the only way you can get access to vr and to use vr you need to make sure steam vr is switched off first then run xplane 11 it's the only way you can get that to work right here we are uh, we're in the uh, standard uh, cessna uh, 172 have a good look around now, unlike uh, fly inside, you actually see your hands as the these two controllers, which are, I've, I think is rather good. And you can select the controls simply by highlighting them. Uh, now, all the controls you just highlight and press the trigger to operate. Uh, the yokes are different in that uh, once you toggle on those, your uh, controllers stick to them, uh, which is handy uh, for flying. Uh, so it's quite different, like you don't really need any real controls to fly these aircraft, just your ones. Now you can also move around outside as you see here. Uh, and this enables you uh, to actually pre-flight your plane. So here I am, so I'm sliding up from my chair. And now if my room was big enough, I would be able to actually walk around this uh, Cessna and have a look at it. But my room isn't, so I have to use teleportation, which we've seen here. Uh, and this adaptation is great, it enables you to pick a place and then pick uh, the direction that you're facing. Uh, and uh, the great thing with it uh, is you get to see the aircraft from the, the outside, one to one scale, and that's something you don't normally get to see in VR. Uh, and it, it, it just makes the whole thing a lot more immersive. Uh, the system also allows you to effectively hike anywhere you want, you can go anywhere in the terrain. So here I am just going off and to hike into the, uh, into the main town. So, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, it provides a lot of opportunity for exploration. Uh, and again, up to now, this is something that uh, you couldn't do. Now, your controller has a, a number of different functions we can see there, uh, from replaying, uh, advanced options, all sorts of things, all handily available to the controller. You can jump straight into the cockpit, like there, or we're going to have to get out for a second so I can find my seat. Yeah, you know, I'm taking my goggles off finds my seats and sits down. Uh, the other way of getting into the plane, which I'll show you now, is where you can simply um, uh, use the teleportation movement as you uh, uh, see now. So you don't see I'm by the plane and pick the front seat and you're in. It's that simple. It also enables you to pick other seats on the plane. So here I'm in the rear. I actually jumped forward too quickly there. I want to stay a bit longer. So pick any seat in the plane and presumably yeah, later on with multiplayer mode you'll be able to fly your friends around I'm guessing but yeah, very handy or even sit in a rear seat in a replay so anyway, we're just going to set our display a bit now I point out uh, this is beta so uh, uh, the, the guys at x are still doing a lot of work on this but it, in my view it works far better than fly inside it's incredibly smooth and the graphics is no real shimmering it, so it, it, the graphics seem much better to me now, i will caveat that by saying i'm using htc vive i've heard that the oculus rift still has a few problems now, this is the uh the board you get with the aircraft it enables you to center the view and also gives you a moving map uh, facility uh, i think they'll add more stuff to that later on you can dock that anywhere here i'm docking it on my uh, left yoke you can put the chain around a seat uh, anywhere that's convenient uh, basically the controls are really, really easy to operate as well. Uh, and it might uh, seem weird controlling the aircraft with uh, your hand controllers as opposed to using real physical devices, but it's perfectly natural uh, and it, it feels almost more natural than using a joystick or, or whatever else you might be using. Because here your hands are in the approximate positions it would be had kind of, you be in the real aircraft. So here we are about to uh, take off. It's very easy to do. Now, in my case, I am using uh, physical rudder pedals, but even if you don't have those, um, the uh, 
Uh, control wands can be set up uh, to operate the pedals as well, you just twist them and that works really well. So theoretically, even if you don't have any flight simulation hardware, it, you could just fly these planes with these wands. It's a very, very easy thing to do as a train pilot. Anyway, it's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a big step up from flying inside and it's not to discredit flying inside because flying inside enabled me to fly my flight simulators in VR a year earlier than I might have uh, normally. Uh, but now, uh, in, well, in this case, x plane have caught up and actually added um, uh, VR directly into their system. Now, for me, uh, using uh, HTC Vive, this means I'm getting spectacular performance. Uh, everything is just liquid smooth, and I'm recording here with some external software on the same machine. Uh, and yet it's still liquid smooth. Now I'm using a, a GTX uh, 980 Ti uh, along with a, an i7 uh, clocked at 4 gigahertz, so it's a fairly uh, beefy machine. But with flying side, uh, I used to get the odd stuttering and especially when I was using Ortho for XP uh, satellite terrain, uh, it would really have problems, whereas here it's just liquid and it makes such a big difference to your flight. Uh, that it just adds to the immersion. So the other thing to do is set stable views, it gives you many views to choose from and you need the controllers effectively to position where you are in the aircraft. And it feels weird because uh, in VR you have real depth perception and it feels like you're kind of floating quite high above the ground and I guess if you don't have a head for heights this might not be too pleasant but then again it's a great way to to get a head for heights in a safe environment. This is great, I guess on one side I could never view the plane from uh, the outside uh, and it makes, uh, it, it adds to, uh, to the experience of, of the flying. There's also a replay facility which I'm going to show you now uh, and that's really weird, like here I'm playing backwards now uh, and uh, I think I'll uh, speed up a bit more. So here we are in the outside view flying backwards and this feels really weird in VR. Now uh, if you don't have your VR legs and you suffer from motion sickness you might not want to do this just yet. But once you get used to VR uh, and the, the, the motion uh, that goes with it, but I highly recommend trying out these replays in VR. They're absolutely stunning because it the real depth perception along with seeing everything at one to one scale just makes these replays completely stubborn absolutely brilliant and I can see myself replaying many of my journeys just to have a look at them from the outside and possibly even sitting in one of the rear passenger seats whilst the replay is happening. Uh, so yeah lots uh, of extra features that simply weren't available in, in Fly Inside. Uh, like I said there are some minor issues like with uh, for me centering the, uh, the cockpit so I have to kind of look a little bit left and then centre the cockpit which I'm doing now uh, and that gives me a, a more natural view. Now what I would say is the view you're seeing here it's not exactly the view that I'm seeing uh, when I'm in the cockpit but that is a long way down when you look down there. That's why I like looking down to kind of scare, scare the uh, wings out a little bit, just looking out and seeing how high up I am. You know, the, the, the view out of the cockpit, uh, when you see it on a TV like this on a flat screen, it, it appears that you're sat quite far back from the, uh, the main panel, but in VR you are sat in the perfect position. It feels like you're naturally inside the plane in the right place, whereas uh, I think that 3D image kind of gets distorted when it's projected onto a flat uh, 2D screen like this so uh, that's why perhaps the perspective might look a little bit off. Now there I'm pointing to where I think the airport is because uh, we're going to do a, a quick circuit around the mountain uh, and then uh, land again. Now the scenery that you're seeing, all I've done to it is I've used Ortho for XP. I'm providing a link uh, uh, down alongside the video uh, and also a link to a tutorial on how to use it. But what it does, it enables you to use Google Maps or Bing Maps and, and bring in a lot of their data into the flight simulator and that includes satellite imagery and that's overlaid with um, natural models so everything isn't flat, completely flat. You're getting a combination of 
uh, satellite uh, flat imagery with real 3D models. Uh, and that along with the, uh, the open maps, roads and railway networks really adds to the feel of being there. Uh, I mean, for intents and purposes, the view I'm getting out of my uh, VR goggles would be the view as if I was flying in this actual place in a real plane. So, uh, and also a, a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, I, I don't know about the USA or other countries, but in the UK to to, to get flying time, you, it costs you easily 150 to 200 pounds an hour. So it's very expensive hobby, whereas here I can just uh, pop into X-Plane and fly, and I can fly in any weather, any conditions, day or night, anywhere around the world using uh, any plane in my library. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a great way to get the full experience of flying without actually owning a, a real aeroplane and a lot of the procedures you'll be following it will be just like the real thing you'll be operating all the switches and following all the procedures that you would for the real thing and in fact uh, with x which I haven't shown here you can actually pull up the um, uh, the checklist and work your way through it now just then I was pointing to where I think the airport is I actually get it slightly wrong because I thought the airport is just around the corner but when I start looking to the right I start noticing I can't see it so but uh, which is why uh, it, it, this can take a little bit longer to get to the airport it's actually further up um, the valley than I thought it was now I say when you look at the window the scenery is just spectacular and I, I highly recommend that uh, you replace the default uh, scenery with scenery from Ortho for XP now, anybody that's seen my first video, uh, which was filmed using the default scenery, it, it shows that default scenery is actually pretty good, but Ortho for XP takes it up to completely the next level, because you're not seeing generic tiles or anything, you're seeing real scenery, as it would look if I was really there. So, if you know an area, you can get the, uh, the, the relevant tiles to that area, and uh, literally sites sightsee around your local area and, uh, and have a blast flying around really really good fun I hear I'm looking right trying to find the airport but I don't I didn't realize at this point it's actually further up the valley and I'm thinking oh my god I'm lost uh, I don't really know this area too well. I've been basically flying around the entire uh, Seattle region and ended up at this airport which I don't know the name of but I will uh, post its name um, uh, in, in notes on YouTube videos you can see it. so you can have a go at flying from here uh, but as I say scenery is stunning uh, and you really feel like you're there um, now for people that have never tried VR it's a very difficult thing to explain because you're seeing this on a, a flat uh, 2D screen on, on YouTube uh, and it, it doesn't give you the same feeling that VR does. In VR, I feel like I'm sat in this plane, really sat at it. But everything looks real and solid, and it has a solidness to it. It's, for all intents and purposes, I am in this plane. It's a really hard thing to get across because the, the 3D you get in VR looks like real life. It's not the weird, crappy 3D you get in cinema. This is real 3D, it just looks and feels solid. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the other bonus is you see everything at one to one scale. So you get a feel for the size of the aircraft, or in this case how cramped the cabin is. You also get a feel for the size of the terrain uh, and the, the structures that you're seeing on the terrain. And of course you've got real depth perception, so I can see exactly how high up I am. Now obviously if you have a nervous disposition or you really dislike heights this might be a problem for you because uh, in a flight simulator you obviously are flying high above the ground. Now on a TD screen that's not a problem but in VR because you have real depth perception you feel like you're flying that high above the ground. So like I say if you're not very good at heights uh, it might be a problem for you. Now this airport's a bit of a strange one because from this direction I've got to fly over this hill to get to it which I think is a bit of a dodgy design uh, decision if you ask me. Now it might look like from your 2D perspective that I'm coming in too low and I'm going to crash into this hill but 
the thing is, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I have real depth perception. That I can see exactly how high up I am without even looking at the altimeter. I can just look out the window and see how high I am. And because of that, I know I'm going to clear the trees on this hilltop, even though on a, a 2D view it looks like I'm going to crash into them. And there they go. Now, from my real 3D view, it looks like I've got plenty of room. Now, the great thing with this control scheme is I'm kind of flying the plane like you would in real life with your left hand on the yoke and the right hand on the, on the throttle, uh, as you would in real life. Uh, and again, that adds to the sense of immersion. Uh, and it, it didn't take me very long at all to get the hang of flying with the wands. It, it might seem a completely nuts idea. Why would you abandon uh, hundreds of pounds worth of flight sim equipment to use your, your Vive wands to fly? But seriously, you need to give it a try because it is such a natural experience. It feels like your hands are in the aircraft and you're interacting with the controls, with the yoke and so forth. So here we go, hopefully for a nice smooth touchdown. I say, I think this is only my third or fourth flight using uh, this system you can see how easy it is to control very very easy indeed so uh, i highly recommend even if you have lots of uh, flight simulator hardware for your first flight move your chair away from all that and try flying with just the ones you will not believe how immersive it is anyway that's uh, the uh, end of this video pretty much uh, i hope it's given you some insight into the new uh, vr features next plane i personally think it's far better than fly inside uh, but then again it is integrated into x-plane all right so long and thanks for watching